When we talk about Jurassic predators, we often hear the names Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus and even Dilophosaurus. However, Jurassic North America also produced a real giant, closely related to the Allosaurus. This was the Sorophaganex, Lord of the Lizard Eaters. The Allosaurus is often referred to as the Lion of the Jurassic, but there was an even larger Allosaur in the Jurassic, the Sorophaganex. Its name meaning Lord or King of the Lizard Eaters. Sorophaganex's classification is still controversial due to the very sparse finds. It was very similar to the Allosaurus. It was just a lot bigger than Allosaurus, but basically had the typical characteristics of an Allosaurid. These include sharp teeth for cutting through flesh, movable jaws, a long skull and strong neck, probably a smaller bite force compared to family members of the Tyrannosaurine, for example, and most likely a crest on its head. Sorophaganex was first described as Sorophagus maximus. As the name Sorophagus had already been given to the flycatcher, a passerine bird from America, it later was renamed to Sorophaganex maximus. So its name changed from lizard eater to king or lord of the lizard eaters. What a great upgrade. Many paleontologists believe that Sorophaganex is a larger species of the genus Allosaurus, but even more consider it a separate genus. Sorophaganex is estimated to have been 10.5 meters or 34.4 feet long. The higher estimates go up to 13 meters or 42.6 feet. His weight ranges between 2.7 and 3.8 metric tons. Higher estimates place its weight even over 5 metric tons. However, at the time of this video, you may have heard about the massive Sorophaganex specimen, Leviathan, a behemoth weighing up to 8.3 metric tons introduced on the Vividens channel. This would make the Sorophaganex not only the largest Jurassic theropod, but also the third largest theropod after T. rex and Giganotosaurus. The Sorophaganex lived around 151 million years ago, in the Kimmerigian and possibly even in the Typhonian stage of the Upper Jurassic of North America. Fossils were found in Oklahoma in the Morrison Formation. It may also have lived in New Mexico. The flora of the Morrison Formation was dominated by ferns, cycads and conifers. The climate was warm and humid with seasonal monsoons. The Morrison Formation would have looked like a lush subtropical floodplain with meandering rivers. Predators that lived next to Sorophaganex include Allosaurus, Turvosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Marshosaurus and Onifolestes. In most cases, large predators like Soro, Allo and Torvo tend to avoid each other instead of getting into potentially fatal conflicts. Predators all too often occupy different niches to further minimize confrontations. The biggest animals in the Morrison formation were sauropods, more specifically Camarasaurus, Apatosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, Barosaurus and Supersaurus. Phyreophorans like Hesperosaurus and Stegosaurus and Onificians like Camptosaurus, Nanosaurus and Dryosaurus were also local to the Morrison Formation. So now we do know about dinosaurs of the Morrison Formation. But how and what exactly would the Formation's biggest predator hunt? Well, let's go with the how first. Since it was so closely related to the Allosaurus, it could have hunted in a similar manner. Contrary to popular belief, Allosaurids probably couldn't have used an axe bite like it's been presented in Planet Dinosaur due to the immense pressure particularly on the lower jaw. It's much more likely that the Sorophaganex bit onto its prey with its wide, gaping jaws before using its powerful neck muscles to bend the head downward. This would then push the jaws further into its prey's flesh. It would now only have to pull back fast to leave a severe and gaping wound on its victim. The prey could have then died out of shock and blood loss, especially smaller and mid-sized prey. A similar killing strategy has also been found in saber-toothed cats. The hunting grounds of the Sorophaganex 
could have been forest areas, which would allow better ambushes, as it was probably slow and somewhat more sluggish than its smaller and lighter built relative Allosaurus. So what would Sorofaganax's menu have looked like? Well, smaller theropods such as Ceratosaurus, Marshosaurus and Onyphilestes would have only been the extreme case if times were tough. His main source of food would probably be Stegosaurus and Sauropods. Juveniles in particular must have been pretty much defenseless against this colossus. If Sorofaganax hunted in a pack, I could even imagine it taking down adult sauropods. Although there's no certain evidence for pack hunting behavior in Sorofaganax, there has been the finding of a bone bed of the close relative Allosaurus. Because of this, some paleontologists believe that the Allosaurus would have hunted in packs. Despite this, it would still be more likely that these were unorganized groups that gather randomly just to profit from the sheer number of Allosaurus taking on larger prey. And since Sorofaganax was practically Allosaurus' bigger cousin, some believe that Sorofaganax could have done the exact same. I personally believe much more in unorganized gangs and pharaopods than real pack hunting. However, there is a much more likely feeding method for large carnivores of the Allosauroidea family, and that would be flash grazing. This strategy has also been suggested for later descendants of basal Allosaurids, namely the Giganotosaurini family member Mapiosaurus. Flash grazing is a strategy of active feeding without actually having to kill the animal itself. This would be my best guess for Sorofaganax hunting adult sauropods. Due to its sheer size, the Sorofaganax paid a price, as it wasn't that high in numbers. In fact, the size of an animal commonly directly correlates to the size of the population. Since Sorofaganax was so big, it probably would have been much rarer than the Allosaurus for example. Meaning if anything was to happen to the climate or its prey items, the Sorofaganax would have a hard time coping with it, due to it being a super specialized hunter. Even though we don't know for sure, this might be the exact reason why the Sorofaganax died out in the late Jurassic. However, even with the Sorofaganax being gone from the surface of our planet, he still holds the title as the largest carnivore of the Jurassic period. That's it for the profile of the Sorofaganax. I hope you could learn something new or interesting. For more dinosaur profiles, check out the playlist Dinosaur Profiles. You can also subscribe and activate the bell to never miss anything in the future. If you want to get to know me more, you can also check out my Instagram and Twitter. Links in the description. And with that, I wish you a splendid day or evening. Goodbye.